What up, guys? Wizards here. Yeah, what's up? This is day 226, making Song Ringer. Look how, look how dirty my desktop's getting. It's crazy. It's crazy. This always happens when I'm making an alpha or something like that. What's up, Ahoy? Aloha? What's up, everybody? Pedro, Marza, Mighty Nest, PMC. Did the broadcast end? It just started, man. Just started. Oh, did it just did it just die? No way. What? What? <clears throat> well, I'm just gonna recap what I've been doing for uh, um, for people on YouTube at least. Oh, right on. Okay, cool. So yeah, I'm working on um. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, all right. Yeah. So what I'm working on here is this. Um, this is uh the world is now sorted, um, by the actual distance that the player would have to walk along those paths. So for example, level eight is right there in the middle of that second lake. And um, in the old world generator, that would have been like level one or two because it's so close as the crow flies to the home position, which is that pink position there in the middle bottom. So, but now that it uses a breadth first um, sorting algorithm and everything, it actually can walk the paths along everything and place the difficulty. So what you're seeing here is white is closest to home. Red means you have to walk the farthest to get to it. So that accurately places level eight in a really difficult position. And level one is actually the closest now. So this is gonna make it a lot less frustrating to play this game. Like that was one of the problems playing the world poopy the other day. What's up, Alex Pita? Um, yeah, so this is, yeah, once again, this is world fart, which is we were playing yesterday. Um, but world poopy was the same kind of thing. It put level one in the middle of that island, and there was a bug where it didn't have a bridge to it. So the bridge bug is fixed, and now it sorts these levels. And also, one more thing I've done to this is I've made it so it puts it goes left, right, alternating too. So you can see that levels one, level one is on the left, level two is on the right. Well, this doesn't actually. Um, this is not exactly a world that. Wait a minute, this is not doing it. <laughs> yes. What happened? Okay, well, let's, let's dial that in. There's, I just had this working a second ago. There must be something wrong with that. Oh, you know what? I probably turned it off to do a, a picture. There we go. Oh, yeah. I just disabled this. So, okay, yeah, here's the code which alternates left, right. So we'll run this again and it'll, it'll actually swap. It'll do left, right, left, right, left, right for the, what, the level numbers. <clears throat> yeah, so there you go. And you check it out, the refills are also left, right. So there's a there's level one and a refill on the on really close to the home screen on the left. And then there's a refill on the right, which is actually the closest thing you can get to. It's a dead end on the right side. Um, so you can see that the right side is a little more difficult in this, in this world because everything's kind of packed far away there. But that leaves some nice exploration to be done in the middle sections there. So yeah, you see two, four, six on the right and you see one, three, five, seven on the left. So more balanced worlds, more balanced worlds and much more um, accurate worlds for placing the difficult levels way farther away in distance as, as you would walk it. Yes, thank you, Prime Factor Zerlugung. Yes, look at this, stacked, man. One, two, three, four, five, six, six, that's a new record. New record. <laughs> oh no, it keeps lagging for you? Dang, sorry man. I've already got my settings pretty low on this end. Um, 
the other day people were telling me to increase the frame rate and then I went back actually to 15 frames a second because my computer couldn't really handle it on this end so okay so it, <laughs> uh, no no banning no banning just because we broke <laughs> we broke a a PC warrior streak we had a six streak a couple days ago oh oh <laughs> you guys it's so great <clears throat> the next thing I want to do is make this okay so this is on my list right is to alternate left right based on a random number so there's random number where's the where's a random number I guess I'll just pick a new one All right, so we'll do r in r equals this get rand mod two. So if i mod two equals r, <laughs> what's up, Pete Wally? You can't switch the video setting. What's that mean? Can you oh can you do can you go from HTML5 to Flash or whatever? So let's see what happens there. We use a random number to switch which comes first. Yeah, there we go. So we got R. So now that put one three five on the on the right side, and Huh. I don't know if that's actually the smartest thing to do because, well, oh yeah, I guess, okay. Hmm. Okay, actually, instead of using a random number for this, I think the smartest thing to do is to actually make, uh, Oh, nice. What's up, Byron Kogan? Yo, yo. Um, Blood, what's up? What's up? What's up? So uh, just to recap, I'm, I'm using a new A-Star algorithm. I found all this from Red Blob Games. Actually, this is one of the best articles on A-Star I've ever seen. Red Blob Games. Introduction to A-Star. Man, this is awesome. If anybody's interested, I mean, they got a lot of other articles on this on this website for game development, but this is a rad one. If anybody's interested in doing ASAR for their game, highly recommend this article. Uh, man, sorry, I, I wish I knew how to help you here, PMC. So yeah, this is it. It basically just uses a priority queue. Here's the priority queue. This is the type def for, the, for a location, which is the pair. Um, you have to in, you have to do a, a hash algorithm for it to be able to store pairs or these locations inside a, an unordered map, and then priority queue just basically pops off elements based on the highest number they have attached to them. So that's how you can do a star or Dijkstra's out. I don't know how to say that Dijkstra's algorithm or greedy best search. You can do any of those algorithms just based on your um, how you how you how do you assign priority to the next locations you're going to do? So, this is the this is a method called set distances, which is basically just using a breadth first algorithm. So yeah, and then I've got some other stuff commented out because later on I'll probably simplify this and put it into some kind of A star class, and then I'll actually use heuristics for being able to do A star and instead of just breadth first, and also quitting if you hit the goal, and also using cost. So you might have more difficulty based on certain terrain types or whatever. Yeah, great article, right? Really helped me understand because I've I've done now A star before, but I never really understood it that well. So this is this really really helped me there because all there, there's so many good visual examples. It just really helps you grok it. So okay, on to the next thing. I think the way to um, to make this better instead of using a random number, it should use which whether one or two is closer to the start so
So let's let's get the distances. So um, this one and this two. Oh yeah, yeah. You did an algorithm course on that. Cool. This one would be vec two of well the current. So it'd be um dead ends. Actually, let's do this. It, in R equals zero. If dead ends dot size. Actually, this this should all this should be up here. If dead ends dot size is greater than or equal to two, it has to be at least that for this. So, well, this one is dead ends zero. Dot pause dot distance to the star pause. And then this two would be <clears throat> Yeah, true, right? Yeah. Yeah, that's kind of fundamental to it all, representing your map as a graph. I mean, I guess I didn't really do a, a graph structure for, for my implementation of it. I just did, but it, I guess it technically could be represented as a map if I wanted to. So. So R is, um, this one is less than this two. That's gonna be zero or one. Let's try that out. So that should put if the if basically if the first um, dead end on the left is closer to the beginning than the first dead end on the right. Yeah, exactly. That worked good. So I put so let's see the two closest sides. There's one here on the left. All the levels that are to the left of the home screen, um, the closest one is is area one represented right there, and then to the right it gets a lot more dip, like a lot crazier because um, the closest one is that R over there. So that R is so far away that now this algorithm does does puts it it also plays with the distance there to determine which one should come first. So if I were to do if I were to swap these. Then you would see that it would swap them all and put two on the right. Oh, is it? Yeah, cool. All right, cool. Oh, true, true, true. Nice, I never thought of that. Cool. Okay, so if this one is greater than or equal to this two, then that would be one. So yeah, let's run this one more time, that'll check it. And then let's try a few more worlds to make sure it works with other different um, you know, setups and stuff. Let's, yeah, let's get something totally different here. We got fart, <laughs> let's try poopy again. Oops, that's the wrong poopy. We got this poopy. Oh yeah, thanks man. Yeah, it's just check out that world. It's way different. Poopy. Yeah, so the that that totally shows that level 1 used to be that number 4 there. That was the level I was so trying hard to find, but I couldn't. So now level one is much easier to get to. It's the shortest distance over there on the left. 
And the shortest distance on the right side is <laughs> two is way far up there. But I guess not. If you're walking as the crow, if you're, as, you, as you would walk it, two is actually not that far. Huh. I mean, this would be an interesting world to play. I wonder why it didn't white. Oh, there's no difficulty there on the near level six. Yeah, it's poopy again. Let's do a little output for, um, where's it at? This will show us all the difficulties and then we can look at what's going on with that top right corner. It looks like it's maybe just not adding the difficulty because there's a uh, water there or something. All right, so we got difficulty of 15.7. No, it's going to be 15.7. 15 here. Yeah, so the difficulty on, on those is zero. Why? Hmm. All right, PMC. Sorry, man. Okay, oh, what could be causing that to be a zero? It must be that it's not able to walk there. Oh yeah, it probably just never walked there. Ah. Oh, 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 yeah, I know my name's my name's crazy, right? Wizard Foo. But several people I've joined other streams and like, and even like talk to friends and stuff like that. And they're like, Wizard FU, what's that? What's that about? No, it's Wizard Foo. Yeah, so I don't know if that's the best name, actually. But I will. It's the name I got now. Let's take a screenshot of this one. I don't know if this is that important to fix right now, but I'm going to give this at least five minutes. I would like to be able to turn those white areas over there into red. Oh, okay, so this, I can see that maybe it's not open. Yeah, of course these aren't open. So these must be backfilled, sort of. After, let's see, where does this actually happen where it puts in the... Oh, I think I know what it is. When, you, when you're creating openings, well, actually where... Yeah, when you're creating openings... It should turn off the traversed. So 
So that's, it's using, for level nine, or for level six right here, it's setting the openings of, of the hole. Where does it do that? Yeah, it's, it's either this where it's creating an opening, it's called set open is the function it's using. Or I think this is what needs to happen. Basically, there's two there's two bits of data that get set every time the maze generator algorithm walks a step. It sets the um, it sets the data for marking which parts of the area are open. So each one of these screens here is separated into sixteen different directions. So there's each one of these is a quadrant, and each one of these quadrants has four different directions. So for, all, for both of those things, you have whether it's open, and you also have whether it's been traversed. So I think that's what it's doing, is it's not marking this as traversed. Oh man, this might break everything, actually. Hmm. Yeah, we definitely do not want to mess with this because this is the way the whole algorithm works. It backtracks sometimes and when it's creating these maze algorithms to do that. So this is not an acceptable way. So it, it'd probably be better to mo to modify the difficulty. These red, the red lines are basically just showing that it's more difficult. Um, it'd probably be best to modify that difficulty here instead of trying to you know backtrack or whatever or trying to do it in the algorithm so is open squared or oh oh wait wait oh it already does do this Yeah, this is really not that important. Uh, yeah, I, I can go back and try this to do this later if I really want to. I'm gonna add this to the ideas, I guess. It's not even anywhere near that important right now. Uh, I guess it's more of a low priority. Cause this, I guess, you know, this might see. I guess this is kind of determining that. Okay, level six is um. is not as difficult as level eight. Whereas actually level six probably should be more difficult than eight. All right, so world Poopy, 15.7 and 15.6 have white and red difficulty mixed. Yeah, this is not that important, I guess. How did the previous algorithm work? work? It, was, it was using um, just as the crows flies distances, so really not very intelligent at all. 
Um, so for example, it use it uses the same oh man. It uses the same places for all the dead ends. Exactly, it's a Manhattan distance algorithm. That's the most accurate way to say it. I was saying as the crow flies, but yeah, it was using Manhattan distance. So that's basically that's it. Manhattan as in city blocks. So it would go, um, for example, this one would have been one of the levels, right? Um, this all these would be levels still, but as the crow flies, this is only like one, two, three, four away. But this is this is the better example here. Is number four. Number four, this one. As the crow flies is only one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, right? So that might get sorted um, as one of the easiest levels, right? Because it's so close to the home screen as the crow flies or as the Manhattan distance. But as you would walk it, you know, it's a lot farther. So that's why it gets to be put number four. This one is, so this one is actually the closest level as you would walk. This is the second closest level, I guess. This this almost seems wrong to me because this. If I were to walk this, I would go, like one, two, three. Well, one, two. I don't know how to count this. Uh, all I know is it's better than it was. It's better than it was for sure. So check out like this is how poopy was. This is gonna be. This might be totally different, actually. Okay. Cool. 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 Yeah. So that's. This is. Yeah. Maybe this kind of illustrates a little bit better. That's how it was. This is how it is. classic example is check this out in the old world poopy just like I said this is actually marked as level one but if you put in the difficulty of how you would walk it this is one of the hardest levels to get to what's up Zoc oh yeah okay but anyways Let's get on to doing some other stuff. That's cool. We've got odd levels in the right positions now. Okay, so next thing on the list, just cracking through the list of bugs to get the alpha out. I'd love to be able to get all these fixed by next Wednesday, but this is definitely not going to make it. So, anyways, um, yeah, let's get this. Let's start with this one. Back to world fart. Fart. And 332, this had a drop with the sword item, even though I already had the sword. I wonder if it has something to do with the items the player already had, though. I don't know. Let's, let's see. Uh, basically, an enemy should never, ever drop the sword. I don't know how they would have gotten it. Oops. Sorry, I auto killed myself. I want to. I want to auto kill everybody. Of course, it doesn't happen now. Let's try fighting these guys. Maybe that was something to do with it. this would thanks thanks Zoc okay so we'll leave key to oh 
Well, let's delete all those. Yeah, yeah, Gein, that's, yeah, that's Jib's job. He's the one that scans the enemies for, he doesn't actually loot, he just scans the body. Oh man, it's turning out that's a hard bug to catch. Yeah, what's up, man? Would it have ever given the player the sword as a drop item? What is the actual nano sword? Life diamond diamond sword. It is kind of close to Diamond and Diamond 5. Perhaps a health item. Got incremented or something? Oh my god, I think I just found it. Yeah, so areas never have a boss item by default. So if I were to do this, it would kind of illustrate this fact, right? Just make the boss item K item sword. Oh, cool, good point, Pedro. How does um how does Enum work there? What you mean? What's up, Momir? Right. Yeah, there that's how it happened. Cool. Wow, I'm so glad I caught that. What's up, hey guys? Okay, so yeah, let me note that for th good point, Pedro. I'm gonna put that as a, um, it's not a high priority item, right? But it is a good thing to get fixed. So, um, pillars and stuff in level two should have and other stuff near lakes and rivers should have reflections. I just noticed this too. Level two reflections are a little off on the X plane, sort of. Yeah, so what is this? Okay, so what's this? What do you mean? What's your question? How does the enum work there? What do you mean, how does it work? Are you just wondering how enums work? Well, bot. See you, bot. Bam. <clears throat> so glad I got that fixed, man. That that's this was like such a bug. Okay, item none. So that's gonna guarantee that. If the boss item never gets set, so wait, where did where did the boss item get set before? What's up, Vong? Welcome, welcome, man. Yeah, so the only way it would have got set is if the boss item had been set manually, and I'm pretty sure that 
Yeah, that only that only happens in some pretty rare cases. So okay, obviously this is what it was. It basically boss item was some random memory. And luckily, most of the time, there was no boss item. I have no idea how that happened. But yeah, on that rare chance, the boss item was set to the sword. Random numbers happened to... <laughs> Thank you, random numbers, for making that happen. Oh, why do I use enum to organize the item list? So that it's strongly typed. Yeah, so check us out. I'm using an enum item type, which is a C++ 11 feature, which allows you to name an enum, and that forces every value, every time you, you um, in the compiler, right, I can pass an item type, and that has to be guaranteed to be one of these, one of these values or whatever, unless it's statically cast or whatever, and you, you know, you can manually cast this to be a different number or whatever, but as long as you're using it normally, this will throw, this will basically have, a compiler error if I ever use an integer in place of an item type or whatever. So this basically makes it very, very much more safe to use in general and to program with using strongly typed enums. <laughs> it's hideous, covered in troll's blood. Uh. All right, cool, that's a good, good bug fix. Let's check these both in. Oh, we don't need this logging. <clears throat> Again? We back? All right. Somehow dropped the connection with Twitch. It was like reconnecting, 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 and then finally it connected. So Twitch's fault, definitely Twitch's fault. Definitely wasn't me. Sweet, we're in business. We're back in business. We're selling lemonade. Okay, what's next on the list? Oh yeah, the red dot appeared in Dungeon 2. Fart. So we're still in World Fart, right? Yeah, Dungeon 2, we're still there. 
So we should be able to run this. Let's make sure that we don't have, we have the compass zero. That's what gave us that error, I think. <laughs> yeah, I know, right, right? It's still dying for you. Try, give it a second. Twitch takes a long time. All right. Yeah, I think we're set up for this. Checking this bug out. <laughs> no, no. Oh, they did, did they? Pigeon carriers? Sweet. Yeah, that would be a good idea, probably, right? A Patreon page? Um, yeah, that was suggested quite a long time ago, and I just never did it. So I probably should do that, huh? Oh, now it doesn't have... Okay. It does not have... Yeah, I, I gotta do this. I do gotta do this, Vlad, Flood. Because... Yeah, it's getting closer to December where, where the Kickstarter funds will run out, and I would love to be able to keep doing this game until at least March before I first release it. What's a Patreon? Are you being sarcastic? What's up, T? What's up, Game Vivo? Welcome, you guys. Working on some bugs here. Just working on things. If I can get all these things done, then the alpha's ready to go, but I probably won't get this far. So the alpha's coming out next Wednesday. I'm just trying to get as much done as possible many bugs fixed as possible so the game is in sort of like a polished state and ready for the ready for somewhat of a release status of alpha release oh okay yeah yeah oh yeah patreon it's um yeah it's kind of like a way to kind of subscribe to somebody you know you can just you can keep you can keep on paying them every month, or you can pay them. I think you can pay them once too. I don't know. Oh yeah, it's pretty cool. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So I'll, I'll do that. I need to do that. I got because that's a really good idea of how I can get to March. Ah uh, yeah. Yeah yeah. Okay, I think what's going on is it actually put the player, or it, it did the compass for the first level, and then it's not doing it for the second level now because I didn't I didn't ride the elevator up into it. So let's try that. Oh, level two. Where's level two? Oh, there it is. Okay, so this is fourteen two. Yeah, totally right. Fourteen two, what? Oh, fourteen two zero. Okay, here we are. Oh, and also, oh, let's go back. Oh, yeah, see? That was totally the bug. What? Now it doesn't have it? Let's start that over. All right, Marza. Good night, man. Good night, good night, good night. Oh, it does have the red dot. Okay, so the red dot is blinking. It should definitely be on top of that X thing, though. So let's see what happens when I go down in here. 
This um, should not, no longer have that red dot, but it does. And then if I go back out, yeah, it still has a red dot. Okay, so that's the gotta be the problem. Oh. <laughs> I love this. Uh, the BC Warriors. How did that even become a thing? So great. <laughs> Five. What? Five. Somebody help us out. Somebody help us out. You know what to do. Everybody do it. Do it. Do it. You know you want to. Okay, it's gotta be where it places this little red dot. Yes, six, oh! Seven would be a record, just putting that out there. Seven would definitely be a record. Indisputable record. Oh, seven! Oh! Eight, oh my god! Oh my god. Eight? That's incredible, that's incredible. We've just broken through the oldest record in the book. This is probably a Twitch. This is probably a Twitch. Oh, we gotta take a screenshot of this. It's probably a Twitch Guinness record right here. <laughs> oh no! Oh, we were almost nine! Oh. <laughs> Twitch record, Guinness Book of World Twitch records. <laughs> it's, it's all right, it's all right. We'll get we'll get nine or ten next time. Dude, one-legged seagull, nice name. I used to live on a boat, so I have a have a relationship with seagulls. Yeah, so the thing is, the boss room needs to be way higher. Let's put it at 10. And then all these other rooms could be at like 2 or 3 or 1 or whatever. It is recorded. Am I a real pirate? No, just a wannabe pirate. <laughs> Uh, Steven Seagal? Such a, his name is so close, right? Alright, so yeah, I'm just getting this little red dot. So it appears in the Craig Z order and also goes away. So once we walk into this lower Z level, there should be no more red dot. Oh good, yeah, so at least the red dot is on top now. And you know what, that red dot needs to be bigger. <laughs> yeah, that's right, that's right. Yep, I need, to, I need to grow my beard out again. I call it like, I say my beard as, a, as if it was something, something big, but it really wasn't. It totally plateaued, it got down to this long and stayed that long for a whole year. I'm like, what? But I've heard that happens to other guys, too. They're like, you just gotta wait it out, man. You'll eventually get past it. Apparently, that's how you do it. Just gotta wait it out. Okay, this thing here. Let's make this one more pixel. This is the HUD. This is like the boss indicator or something. Where the heck is it? Too many layers. Way too many layers. But they're all kind of necessary because they output as different pings. Um, mini HUD? Maybe it's in here. Yeah, here it is. Oh, screw this. Let's use this auto select layer thing. There it is, item indicator. It's not an item indicator. 
boss indicator. Oh no, you have a huge hole? That's crazy. Crazy, man. What's up, Ethan? Good for you, man. Whoops. Yep, there. Good. All right, let's export this. We'll have a bigger red dot. That will actually be a good thing because that was there's a pretty small red dot. Oh, it's wrong, 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 wrong. We need to save for web. All user slices, sheets, HUD. Sometimes they even migrate a little. <laughs> yeah. What? Awesome. You've never shaved? Yeah? So you wait, you've never shaved and your beard is only as long as mine? That's crazy. Whoa. So it puts the boss position. Where is it? where the heck is it again? Oh, here it is. Boss room. If boss pause is valid. So every time we go to a different Z level, we need to reset the boss pause. And I'm pretty sure it is doing that. Reset boss pause. Oh, uh, here's the bug. So this needs to be set to... Um, Invalid. Oh, maybe you'll get it. Maybe you'll get it eventually. I got a friend like that too. He definitely grows no beard. His whole face, he's never has to shave. It's, it's weird. I think it's weird. He's weird. No, I don't, I don't actually mean that. I guess I'm kind of jealous. Sometimes I wish I, I didn't have a beard. Be cool, right? Not have to shave? Spend those two minutes every three or four days? Not shaving? Whoa, it's really big now. Okay, we need one more pixel down and up, wherever. Oh, right? Oh, is this, is this, is this my friend a woman? No, he's not a woman. Ugh. It's gonna be three and two now. Okay, so yeah, this should go in. Oh, it's a protein, huh? Huh. I heard if you want to avoid hair loss, you can do, um, is if you get more blood to flow to your hair, on a daily basis, it's a good thing. I don't know if that's right or not, but that caused me to start doing yoga. And it worked for me. My dad lost all pretty much, you know, a lot of his head hair, but I haven't lost my head hair. But I don't know, I also heard that's based on your mother. So maybe that's wrong. Ah, so now we just need to reset boss pause whenever we go downstairs. which happens at the very beginning when we create the scene. And then the fluxes, arriving the dungeon, arriving the overworld, we also wanna do when we go downstairs or upstairs. So that's just, um, every time we fade in. Yeah, actually we can take this out of these. We don't want to do, we don't even need to do this anymore. Arrive dungeon, right, blah, blah. This just needs to be inside, fade in, begin. After we create the area.
to reset the boss boss. We can probably do it before or after, either way. We'll just do it like that. Actually, let's do it like this, just to, I don't know, kind of prove a, per prove a point. Oh, interesting. Protein. All right, so we're on the overworld. That map takes forever to fade in. Yeah. We got the red dot. Go downstairs. No red. Oh, come on. What? Okay, let's let's pay attention to this then. Area reset boss pause. And also we should probably set a breakpoint wherever the boss pause is getting set to something else. Uh. Let's just do, let's set a breakpoint only in reset boss boss. Pay attention because this is the only place where it ever gets set. Oh yeah, it does need to be after we create the area because that's what it sets the position, the new world position and all that. Okay, this, this probably fixed it. Ah. Oh my god, so many bots. Ban. Twitch, man. Twitch has got to do something about these bots. So here we're getting it called right from create scene. And we walk in. Now, or did the, at this area. Yep. Invalidate, get the current pause, which is, it should be, yeah, zero, zero, negative 12. And of course, we don't have the compass for this area, which could never have that. Cool. So now, good, no, no more red dot. Okay, I believe this bug is now fixed. Super glitchy. The graphics, I gotta fix all that. It's gotta be smoother. Cool, no red dot at least. Yeah, that's another bug fixed today. Bam! Alright, and the maps, um, It takes way too long to fade in what, the first time you open up the gear. Uh, yeah, I already did that for my last game, basically. I used vector graphics. My buddy used vector graphics, actually. He did all the graphics for Hero Bash. Yep, this is the game we made. It's all vector graphics. And it's it uses, um, what do you call it? I forget what that's called, where you use that kind of animation where you just move bits of your sprites with they're like bones, kinematics, and all that. Oh! Oh, that too, probably. Yeah, so I've done vector graphics before, but I really love pixel art. Pixel art is, is really appeals to me. It brings back that... uh. Yeah, see you, Teak, if you're leaving. Okay, so the freezing fog stopped working. It's 
playing area with those guys. Skeletal animation, that's right, yeah. Skeletal animation. Yeah. So I've done I've been there, done that. It's pretty cool, you know. I mean it, for for your whatever aesthetic you're going for, vector art and and or skeletal animation can be a really cool thing. There we go. Six two one has some synth enemies. Yeah. So what these guys do is they have this this freezing cloud thing, which allows you to um, or you get stuck in it. <laughs> Whoa. Uh, look at this, 1950. <laughs> nice one. Yeah, so if you get caught in this guy's freezing cloud, you you should you should move really slowly. But I'm not moving slowly at all. Okay, so let's get to the me mechanism for how the freezing cloud used to work. It uh, it modified the player's speed. I think it had its own behavior. Yeah, freezing gas. Timer. Target speed. Target speed 0.01 or oh. 0 0.1. Yeah, so the target speed is the thing we were looking at. <laughs> Was it? Really? That's crazy. Target speed. K behavior target. Not if. Here we go. Okay, behavior target. Set target mass, set target none, set target ran, hero, nearest. Speed. Why doesn't this have that as a comment? Be nice. Set target speed. And this one is set target timers. Okay, so should we we should be getting this breakpoint right here. Num values greater than one, is that right? So the number of values for this call is target speed one. So it's two values. Yeah, so that should be fine. Oh, we also we need to guarantee to have a target. Oh. Oh, if target any, target speed one. Yeah, I doubt we're even getting that. That's weird. Right, right. Oh my god. Third bot today is so many bots. Do so they had humans role playing as computers trying to talk like humans? No, I think it was just I think it was just two it was a man chatting to a woman in a terminal. If that's, I don't know, maybe I'm, if that, maybe I'm misinterpreting that. I don't know. 
Hey, let's see if we're even hitting this. If we're hitting this, then that's a good sign that the, the systems are still working. It's just something happened with the target's move speed factor, maybe. He never even proposed that? Man. Ex Machina is all a lie. Nothing. Nothing at all. Okay, so that that's probably it. So there's this is probably good. But something else is wrong in the behavior where this is not kicking in. It's like it doesn't even have a target at all. Mm. Nope, no love. Hmm. Okay, so I'm probably gonna have to. S if timer end. Oh. Right, this is the freezing gas. All right, first of all, let's simplify this whole, this whole situation, everything in this. I'm gonna check in my existing code. All right, that's all good. So this is the fix for um, got that fix. Cool. So now we're in a state where we can, you know, we're in a clean state and in, in the repo, so we can easily make some like radical changes, like foes, for example, the synth enemy. I want to not have blobs for a moment, so it makes that easier. And secondly, the screen we're on, area pattern for level, random, and this sort of water is Smith's, I think is the one it is. Yeah, cool. So now we've got a blank room. Easier to get to this guy. Easier to debug a little bit. Be nice if he was more intelligent so he did this more often. So let's make him so he does it more often. Um, synth. This is his gas thing.
It's all based on his timer. And his smartness. There we go. So now he does it a lot more predictably. Okay. Um, next thing, he's so he's launching this freezing gas for sure. We have no freezing gas. Face the target. Do the sound. Animate. Spawn. So we're spawning a freezing gas entity. Um, spawn. I just want to know. Uh, we got to get into this freezing gas's head a little bit. So uh, let's, let's start by turning on debug. Maybe that can help us figure out what's, what action he's running or whatever. Oh, I forgot that the, all the text is too small now. Because <laughs> I did that whole frame buffer thing. Let's start by making the text bigger then. I believe that's a child to render component. Maybe that's created here in the component actually. Oh yeah, it is. Okay. Set scale. Oh, here we go. Let's turn that off. Even though some of these things might be too long to even read on the screen, at least now they'll be um, readable parts of them. Yeah, cool. Okay, so let's watch what happens to the, oh, let's turn off all these flies too. Which is just distracting. As you can see, my behaviors are actually kind of hard to debug. The behavior tree is a cool thing, which kind of gets rid of a lot of code, but when, when problems happen, it's not exactly easy. It's crazy, it's scale, it's text. Sequence timer, dir negative one, target zero. Target zero, that's the problem. It's got no target. The new form of the problem can be described in terms of a game, which we call the imitation game. It is played with three people, a man, a woman, an interrogator, who could be of either sex. The interrogator stays in a room apart from the other two. Object of the games for the interrogator to determine the interrogator to determine which of the other two is the man and which is the woman. Wow, Koken, so true. He knows them by labels X and Y. Will X please tell me the length of his or her hair? Really, this is the t this is what Turing did. This is his first, this is his, like one of his first things, the imitation game. I propose to consider the question, can machines think? We now ask the question, what will happen when a machine takes the part of A in this game? Will the interrogator decide wrongly as often as when the game is played like this as he does when the game is played between a man and a woman? Oh, okay. So it kind of it kind of is what we all thought it was, right? Would you like, you'd like to try that out? Yeah, so the Turing test. This is kind of right, kind of related to what I would think of 
at least as a Turing test or whatever. Wow. Just a little computer science history right there. Yeah, I know. Yeah, that's what, that is pretty funny, right, to us today. Hmm. Yeah, so this thing is never getting its, its, um, when the entity is spawned, it's not getting in target. Ah, oh, I feeling, I was feeling I did change some stuff with how targets are created. So let's look for spawn. Uh, right. Yeah. Yep. Definitely a big, um, a big clarification point there. Most people don't really, most people think of the Turing test totally wrong, or at least the, the imitation game. Yeah, so this is definitely not going to set a target. Uh, maybe it just does need it. But yeah, it would it would definitely run its behavior. It should run its behavior. <laughs> Good point. What's up, GNZ? Yo, yeah, I'm about to, I'm about to. <laughs> I am, this is the game. This is already it. Did I convince you? Let's try this. If we remove this whole timer thing, The game is find the spammer. <laughs> little lower, man, little lower. Dude, do it. Come on, do it. What's wrong with this guy? Oh, maybe he did it once, and because I did that, he doesn't ever want to do it again. Oh, man. What's up, Jimmy? Welcome, man. What happened? What happened to these guys? These freezing gas entities are supposed to run their AI. Timer. Timer is the only sequence that runs. So it runs this, and then it's like it never runs any of these other ones. So it never runs slow.
Oh, it must be never ever having a timer. It's probably rerunning this over and over and over and over. It's running timer, 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 never doing anything else. That's all I can imagine. If timer begin. Here's if, here's timer. Let's check if we're even getting that. Man, I wish this were easier to debug somehow. Uh, problem is this guy uses his timers too. Uh, Yeah, I do have conditional breakpoints, and I do use them when when I can, but um, um, sometimes they're I found that they're really really slow. At least in Xcode, they're really really slow sometimes. So that's only if they're inside a really really tight loop that's run a lot. That's the only time I don't use them. But yeah, I use conditional breakpoints when when I can. You know, yeah, that's a, that's a good point, right? If I can set conditional breakpoints, that would help this particular situation right here. Like, if this is, I don't know. But that's another thing too is you can't is some some restrictions like you can only use like plain old data, like you can't use um, strings and stuff like that. I don't know. It's kind of it's kind of limited. Coming out this sequence. Let's take that out of the equation. Yeah, no, there's an easier way. I can at least do stew. So instead, because I can't use a conditional breakpoint here, maybe I can at least do uh, an old school conditional breakpoint, right? Just doing and adding some code to do it. At least that's, that's kind of like a conditional breakpoint. All right, so yeah, let's try and debug this, this whole freezing gas entity. This is the beginning of its behavior where it tests if its timer is at the beginning. Its timer should be starting at the beginning, but it keeps on running the same part of its behavior over and over and over. Here we go, okay. Hey, greetings, Voice of Grog. What's up, man? Welcome, welcome, welcome. 
You miss a really epic moment. Check this out. Look at that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight BC Warriors in a row. It was a, it was a Twitch record. We're pretty much pretty much certain that was a Twitch Guinness Book of Records right there. History history was made on today's stream. All right, subtype two, one thirty six, whatever that is. Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's all right. Next time we'll get we'll get ten or twelve. Hell, maybe, maybe we'll get one of those streams where there's like a million people on. We'll get fifteen. And, actually, it's probably harder when there's a lot of people on, huh? I don't know. That's what makes it so rare and epic. Okay, can timer begin? It should be like negative eight, 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 or something. Yeah, negative eight, eight, eight. And e dot eight i dot timer. This is the most important part of it all right here. Oh yeah. True. Okay, let's let that run again. Okay, good. This time it's something else. It's end. This time, let's begin. This time, it's end. Just goes from beginning to end. Probably because I sat here in the debugger for so long. Okay, so if anybody's just joined the stream, I'm trying to fix this guy here. He launches this thing called Freezing Gas, and it's meant to... Hmm, oh, you know what? I guess I could... All right, Momir. Yeah, good night, man. Sorry today's stream was so late. I got a better idea. Let's just print out the freaking timer. Every time we run this behavior timer. Turn off this breakpoint. So now we're gonna get some some log statements instead of these.
Okay, so the freezing gas should have removed itself by now. Okay, yeah, it's flipping back and forth. Right, this is all accurate. Yeah, the timer is negative 888. Timer is 3.5. The timer ticks down nicely too, so the timer is working fine. And then it gets to the end here. Okay, so this bit is working fine. But it never it never does this. Actually it just never does this. Hmm. I just reversed the order there because I'm thinking maybe it's running, it's trying to run that, but it doesn't. Nothing. Let's just do that. Timer began, timer 3.5, very simple. If target is none, target nearest. It should at least change the sequence and the target for this thing. But it doesn't. Oh, it never runs another one because it never removes itself. What? What's up, Z Twitch? Welcome to the stream, man. Sorry, I'm kind of frustrated with this code here. I'm, I'm just baffled why this isn't working. What to do next? I guess I can go set a, I can set, yeah, I can set a breakpoint here where it's if target none and So if E a profile profile is freezing gas and the subtype is none, we're gonna set a breakpoint here. Hello, what's up? Welcome to the stream, Pingu. Where's that ping you? All right, so I'm gonna step through this. 
Uh, at least it's getting here. It's doing this test. Target none. It is getting that far. Okay. Um, why isn't it successful though? Axjuf. What's e to ai does dot target? First of all, this is a pro freezing gas, right? Yeah, freezing gas. AI is active. Yeah, his target is zero. Returns true. Good. Let's continue this loop. Let's figure out what's next in this. This is the next step of the of the behavior, which should be target nearest. And then target speed 0 0.1. So stepping through this behavior one bit of time. This is target nearest. Uh, what's its target mask? Forgot all about target mass is zero. What the heck is the target mask? Oh, that's what. Oh, yeah. That's what this thing might target. Ah, forgot all about this thing. The target mask. Oh, wait, but there's two ways of doing this. If it's got a target mask, it uses that for a collision system. Otherwise, it uses the profile system. So this potential array, we used to get EADS for stirval1. Oh, what's stirval1? Nothing. Yeah, so E is going to be blank. Or potential. The potential array is blank, right? Yeah, it's blank. Oh. So set target nearest would need. Okay, I got this. Serval zero, right? Yeah. Serval one. Okay, so I would either need to do a serval or a target mask. Where the heck do these target masks get set again? This is actually a good thing to have target masks, but you need to make sure these are actually getting processed right into this entity. Oh, that's right. It gets parsed straight from that. Oh. Okay, so this whole time, this thing was missing one single word. Freezing gas. Target nearest friend. That's all that needed. Let's see if that works. It should almost be a default argument, like target nearest. Crash Lemon, cool man, you started learning SDL? Good for you. That's awesome, man. Definitely, I'd love to hear more about your progress. What's up, Overcaster? Good evening, good evening. Okay, this is like... Seven times the charm. Yes, it worked. Oh, it worked. All right. Okay, that was a crazy. You need a good name for a vector. 
vector cosine t sine t from t circular vector arc vector pi vector angle to yeah that's pretty good angle to direction angle to vector i don't know yeah i like this this is better <laughs> better than what I was suggesting there. Oh man, so okay, this whole, I need to look for target nearest because that is such a, oh man, that bug took me forever to find. That's fine, look at this. What, every single, yeah. <laughs> every single reference was fine, except for that one. Jeez. Okay, let's let's check other types of target target none that doesn't need a second value rand rand does need target rand so let's check that target rand oh i like that kogan man you you got a good mind dude very good mind Target ran friend. Yeah, these are all good. What's up, baby? Oh, hi, baby. Clean it up a little. Okay, I'll be done streaming soon. Oh, no problem. Target hero. That's okay. Target nearest. That is now okay. Target speed. That has nothing to do. What's setting a target? Okay. Man, one tiny little, one tiny little word I forgot to update when I did this whole target nearest thing. Okay, but now I can go and cross all this off the list, get all this back to normal. Draw, debug, zero. What do we change here in component? This probably is not, oh yeah, this is actually good to keep. Too long? What? Angle the unit? What about angle the unit? System, let's delete this breakpoint. We don't need, oh, there's a couple of other random things to get rid of here. Oh, there you go. Unit, that's pretty good. What about, what about unit float angle? Yeah. Oh, you got float radians. Never mind. Never mind. Never mind. Sorry. My head's my head's just full because of this whole bug here I was I was doing. Okay, so let's get rid of all this crap. All this stuff that I did. Yeah, yeah, good point. Good point. Yeah. Ignore my comment there. All right, so foes, we restore foes. Put in those blobs again. That's the that's the juice right there that made everything work. Synth. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's not a dumb question at all, man, of course. Um, how are those text files used in the game's development? Yeah, they are variables of program references. So here's how, I'll give you a little example. For example, yeah, they're exactly, they're, being, they're data files that are read, but I'll show you. Um, for example, skip menu, let's look at this one. Skip menu is a single variable, right? which I would put to zero and I wouldn't skip the menu. One would skip the menu. But let me show you the actual code that does that. Um, skip menu is right here in the very beginning of the game when it's first running everything. It goes in one of these lines is if it has a save file and get bool settings, so this get bool setting function looks inside that settings file. So the setting file gets read into a val tree object 
which is something I put on GitHub. So if you're interested in that, it's on GitHub. It's called Valtree. Uh, and I can post a link if you want. But um, it looks through the settings, looks for the sibling by the name that you just gave it, and gets the integer value of it. So really, all that, all that is doing is, is looking into that data. And so basically, if it does have that data, it runs straight into the game instead of running the intro or the preview layer. So that's just one example of how that data is used. I hope that clarifies for you there, Voice of Grog. And if you're still curious, keep asking questions. I'd love to help you understand because I know some people are at certain levels, you know, with their game development, and it really helps to have things explained. So. If you would generate code from the settings file, it would be much easier to debug. Generate code? What do you mean? Uh, yeah, essentially every one of the text files is a similar purpose, it's just data. Yeah, cool, Jimmy. So, uh, Google protocol buffers. Uh, cool. I'll, I can check this out later on, but I'm looking for more of a specific example of what, what, uh, Vlad means by that. Generating code from the settings file. I'm, I'm so curious. Because I would love to improve this. Alright, what's next? Oh yeah, we turned off all the, the flies. <clears throat> you need two compile passes. The first one generates actual code from the settings file. Oh. Oh. Huh. I'm having trouble seeing how that would actually be very beneficial to this project though. I mean, that I can see that being a slick thing for some systems, but for this game, it's really wouldn't, I don't know if it's that necessary. But it's an interesting thought. Generating code, convert the text to a CPP file, ah, right? Oh, okay. Yeah, that's that's a nice simple way to put it. Brandon Dyer, what's up? How do you remove the pixel interpolation when scaling the screen? Oh, oh, yeah. For two things. There's two ways to do that, Brandon Dyer. Oh, it would have breakpoints. Very good point, Pedro, yeah. So how do you remove the pixel interpolation? There's two, there's two things you got to do. First thing is like this. Every one of your sprites... You want to call um, set is it what is it set set alias text params oh get texture set alias text params so do this on every one of your sprites first of all this is going to get rid of your your uh, blurriness and then also you can use a frame buffer if you want to render everything to it to actually get an, an old school retro pixel look. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, in OpenGL, this is this is the equivalent, right? Thanks, Devnot. Yeah. This is the exact the equivalent in Open G, in uh, OpenGL would be to set filter nearest, but in op, in Coco Studio X, this game engine, you just call you get the texture and you call that function.
Oh, right. Type safe statements. Compile time error checking, right? And you can actually debug it as normal code. Awesome. You guys, well, this is a really interesting thought, especially for behavior trees. So maybe I will consider this. Because, right, like, right, this just took me how, how long? Half an hour or an hour to figure out that this one word was missing for my behavior tree. Because it's really hard to debug this text. Because it's, you know, it run it basically it, it's sort of like it does it at runtime. So that's a good point, right? If I were to turn behavior trees into compiled code, what did you call this again? What was this called? Oh, metaprogramming? Sweet. Yeah, you're welcome, Brandon Dyer. Oh, really? Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay, so you called it metaprogramming, but also what did you call it before? Because I will definitely research this. Oh, you're just calling generating code from a settings file. Yeah, okay. Really good. Thank you, Vlad. Thank you, Eric Hogan. Really, really great thoughts on that. Because, yeah, if I could make this process easier to debug the behavior trees, it would be a hell of a lot better. Even for this current project, I can, I can see the benefit clearly now. There's one more little bit of stuff I needed to get rid of. Cool. There we go. <laughs> the one line fix. Oh. Okay, let's cross that bug off the list, though. Might have taken a while, but at least it's better. At least the game's better. Yeah, thank you guys again. Um, I think that's about it for today's stream. I'm gonna do a little recap though, and I'll I'll play the game just for a second. Okay, so um, yeah, just a little recap before I close the stream here. Um, if anybody is following along this game and its development and stuff, this is, uh, I've been working on this today. Basically, this is, uh, are you using A star pathfinding to, um, to determine the actual walking distance to different levels? So this is a, this is like an overview map of the overworld for this game. This is a Zelda like game called Songbringer. If you, if you didn't know, if you just joined the stream, um, and it procedurally generates a Zelda like world based on six letters you give it. So this, these six letters are fart and it creates this world, right? And before it created the same kind of world, but it, it used to put level one um, right where the eight is right here. So this used to be level one because it's very close to the uh, the opening here. This is pink one is the, the home screen. <laughs> Best world seed yet, right? Fart. Uh, yeah, So and so now that it uses this whole a star pathfinding algorithm and stuff it can put it can accurately put level eight there because level eight this is kind of a difficult right the redder the redder the path is that's the the longer it takes to walk there so eight and nine are really really far away so big improvement to the game there it, it should really keep me from getting frustrated because really this was born out of playing the game on sunday and playing this world called poopy which poopy turned out to be an actual poopy world, but now poopy is a lot better because of this improvement with the A star and all that, and another another bug fix too. So, yeah, so that's it for this um, for this stream. Let me play the game really quick though, in case anybody is like, "What the hell is this?" This is kind of what the game looks like, <clears throat> just like this. This is it right here. Joking. <clears throat> yeah, so it's just like Zelda basically. This is a this is actually one of the dungeons. Um so you've got dungeons and you've also got the overworld, so Yeah, this guy's fixed now. This guy does this freezing fog gas and now that that bug with him is fixed, you can actually be, be frozen by his gas and stuff. 
She frozen by his gas in the world fart, right? Hilarious. So, yeah, that's it for today's stream. Um, I'll be back tomorrow, usually same time. I'm usually around 4 p.m. Pacific, or sometimes 2, sometimes 5, who knows. So the best way to follow me is to follow and then get the email notifications. So, so that's it, everybody. Thank you again. Appreciate y'all a lot. Thanks for all the suggestions. I got some good homework to do here and check out. So